midst of people who live in religious harmony. A place Universitas Chiquala is a public university located in Banda Aceh, the capital of Aceh province. Located at the westernmost point of Sumatra Island, the province is rich with traditions, cultures, languages, and natural resources. The university is also known as the heart of the Achenese, Jantong Hati Rakyat Aceh. It is the oldest university in Aceh, officially established on September 2nd, 1961. Universitas Shikuwala was named after an Islamic scholar of Aceh, Abdurraouf bin Ali al-Jawi Asinkali, who is also known as Tunku Shikuwala. He established an Islamic education center at a river mouth in Banda Aceh, which later became an official higher education institution. During this time, he gave great contribution to the education values and Islamic laws and regulations in Aceh. In addition to the main campus in Jerusalem, Banda Aceh city, Universitas Shiukawala has also established a second campus in the district of Gaia Louise. The campus is called Program Study di Luar Campus Utama, the study program outside the main campus, which was officially opened on September 2, 2014. Universitas Shikwala has 12 faculties and a postgraduate school. The Faculty of Economics and Business, the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, the Faculty of Law, the Faculty of Engineering, the Faculty of Agriculture, the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, the Faculty of Medicine, the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, the Faculty of Social and Political Science, the Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, the Faculty of Nursing, and the Faculty of Dentistry. All these 12 faculties together offer 135 study programs of different levels. Diploma programs, undergraduate programs, professional programs, specialist programs, master's programs, and doctoral programs. With various faculties and programs being offered, Universitas Shikwala now hosts more than 32,000 students from various regions in Indonesia and overseas. University has received numerous awards for its achievements at both the national and the international levels. For example, with Malam Diwa Electric Car, Universitas Shikwala recently won as the second fastest team to compete technical inspection in the electric class at a prestigious competition in Asia, the Shell Eco Marathon Asia competition. research area, the university has also developed a good reputation at the national and international levels through its excellent research and research centers, such as the Tsunami and Disaster Mitigation Research Center, and the Atsiri Research Center. Universitas Shiukawala also publishes numerous scientific journals. Some of them have been indexed by Sinta, the Indonesian Citation Index, as Quartal 1 and 2 journals. One of the university's journals, Studies in English Language and Education Journal, has recently been indexed by Scopus, one of the most reputable journal indexing and citation databases in the scientific world. Universitas Shikwala has actively participated in several collaborative programs with several countries in Asia and Europe. These include Erasmus Mobility and Capacity Building Program, IMTGT University Network Program, and the Erasmus Plus Program. 
Universitas Chiacuala has numerous national and international collaborations with universities and companies across the globe. Through this collaboration, the university has successfully organized various academic and non-academic events which have improved the university's national and international reputations. The Joint Research and Publication Program, the Exchange Program, the Internship Program, the Disaster and Cultural Summer Camp, and the Humanitarian Program are among many others. Universitas Chiacuala does not only focus on improving the quality of academic activities within the campus, but also proudly offers services to the communities. These tasks are assigned to three units at the university, the Office of International Affairs, Career Development Center, and Entrepreneurship Center. These units help students, staff, and alumni expand their experiences in academics, business, and beyond. Therefore, Universitas Chiacuala has always appreciated and placed at top priorities all partnerships and collaborations and has managed to make the university what it is today, the heart of the Achenese, Jantong Hati Rakyat Ache. The university continuously strives to improve the quality of its academic activities, research development, humanitarian works, and the quality and quantity of scientific publications to achieve its vision to become the leading university in Asia and to become a world-class institution. Have you heard this story about a beautiful place? place that makes you feel restful. In the midst of people who live in religious harmony. A place that makes you feel home. That makes you curious for more. Adventure. Start your journey, travel to the place where the story unfolds. Feel the sea breeze caress your face and the sound of the waves breaking your consciousness. That you can see them through the beauty of woven fabrics. Smell them through the scent of coffee that wafts in the air. If you have never heard it before, you may now find it intriguing. You may want to know every square inch of this place. From the beauty of its land. Biodiversity. Perhaps you've heard this story about a land which has traditions so diverse.
After all, welcoming guests is their tradition. The light of Aceh. Wonderful Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Peace be upon you and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen Best wishes to all of us as the master of ceremony for today My name is Friga Gentana We would like to say welcome all participants to the webinar event of Indonesia International IoT Olympiad 2023 Again, I would like to extend our honor to Mr. Khalil Mokhtar, PhD, Head of Computer Engineering, Universitas Shah Kuala, IYSA team, Organizing Committee, Distinguished Guests, and all beloved participants. In today's webinar, we'll be having talks about AI use in science, headed by Dr. Khalil Mokhtar magnificently. A reminder that this webinar is a collaborative event of IYSA with Universitas Shah Kuala. Beforehand, I would like to introduce the speaker for this webinar. Dr. Khalil Mokhtar, PhD, has achieved a Bachelor of Engineering or Sarjana Technique at ITPLN in Jakarta, a System Specialist at PT PCI Jakarta, a Master of English at Asia University in Taiwan, a lead researcher at NSYU Taiwan for a Qualcomm Multimedia University project, a PhD at NSYU Taiwan, an AR research scientist at North Flux Jakarta, an assistant professor at Universitas Shah Kuala in Aceh, and lastly, a current IEEE senior member. Without further ado, let's start off this seminar by welcoming the speakers to Mr. Khalil Mukhtar. The time, floor, and mic is yours. This. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello everyone, uh, thank you. First of all, uh, I'm very honored to be here, to be invited as a, one of the speakers in uh, this very uh, interesting and outstanding uh, competition. Indonesian Young Scientists Association and also collaborated with uh, Universitas Shah Kuala. And also probably would like to welcome our uh, foreign participants from Vietnam, right? From Hanoi or another city? Hanoi, okay. Welcome, selamat datang. Okay, enjoy your time in Indonesia, especially in Aceh. And I also would like to thanks to all uh, participants from Indonesia, especially uh, from Universal Shah Kuala and all, also the committee who already uh, want to invite me on this session. So, um, probably um, the moderators already uh, read my uh, CV. However, I would like to probably quickly review uh, some of them. So, uh, after I graduate from under uh, a bachelor degree in 2007, I continue my career in Jakarta, in PT Prawida Ciptakarsa Informatica. So at that time, um, probably about uh, three years there, in order to develop the banking system, especially an enterprise application 
that was uh, developed by Bank of Indonesia. So at that time, which is very uh, unforgettable to me. And also then I decided to quit after three years uh, working experience and continue to pursue my master's degree in Taiwan. In 2012, I finished it and directly continue my PhD and finished it in 2017. So uh, after I finished the degree, then I returned to my uh, home country, especially my home hometown. So uh, this is my hometown, actually. So uh, my village is next to this university. So after 14 years, uh, go outside this, this city, then I uh, finally decided to, to back. Not only as a lecturer, but I also work uh, as an AI research scientist in Nordflux, an AI national leading company uh, in Jakarta, in our capital city. And this uh, only about four, uh, two years, however, until now we are still uh, uh, conducting the collaboration, especially in research. Okay, so um, this is uh, probably uh, most of you know about this. Who is he? Especially Indonesia, me no, <laughs> because some some of them uh, look like you. <laughs> so this is our ministry, yeah, Ministry of Education. Okay, so uh, Mas Menteri because he is still very young, especially under maybe under forty, and we call him Mas Menteri. So Nadim Makarim ever um, emphasized or mentioned about the industrial revolution in Indonesia. So why we have to actually read this statement because this is one of the roadmap or the planning to be uh, for Indonesia to be very ready and well prepared in order to embrace the industrial revolution era. So what is industrial revolution era? So this is uh, one of uh, his statements that many industrial activities that were originally carried out still relied on human power will switch to digital machine power and sophisticated technology. Okay, so uh, probably previously there are many tasks that were conducted or executed by human but nowadays have been switched or shifted and executed by robot or computer and so on. So because of this, Indonesian talents, especially teenagers uh, and also those who are graduated from uh, engineering faculty, but uh, later I will show you that not only engineering have to be prepared, but all of them. So Nadim said that one of his uh, leading or one of his uh, priority is to introduce the Campus Merdeka. Okay, this is the independent campus. And he said that this program was created to prepare human resources so that they have adaptive talents in the era of the industrial revolution. Okay, so in other words, in this era, we have to be very adaptive. Okay, maybe uh, some of uh, guests or some of the participants from Vietnam already prepared from, this is junior high school or general high school? Senior high school level? Elementary? Okay, so if they already get to you know or get very familiar with the IoT device and so on, so they're already preparing to embrace this era, right? So for us, in Indonesia, we have to, to do the same. And I believe we are also ongoing to embrace this industrial revolution era. For what? To work very close to the technology, probably the computers and then uh, robot and so on, so that we can work together to simplify the task, to save the time, but at the same time, we gain more benefit. Okay, so this is uh, our uh, objective. 
So uh, if we talk about uh, industrial revolution for me, in our lab, we have the camera vision lab and some of them in, uh, we, uh, with, with us today. So I, with my team and I, uh, started the involvement of industrial revolution started from 2019. So when we joined the competition, which is this is national level competition, then we proposed its so-called smart bin, uh, a low-cost smart bin. Okay, a low-cost smart bin is a smart bin because when we would like to, let's say, throw the trash, we will close it to the camera, and the lid of the bin will automatically open whether it is recycled or non-recycled. So we employ or install the some uh, sensors. And then our Raspberry also work on a very light version of AI models. So when we close the object to the camera, the camera can identify which is uh, whether this is the non-recycled trash or recycled trash. We get the most favorite uh, award at the time. And uh, all of now work in capital city. So I then um, start gradually or gradually, yes, uh, start from uh, 2020 and so on. Then uh, in Warta Digital, uh, Warta Economy as a economic magazine in Indonesia also put me in one of the recognized uh, Indonesian scholars who returned to Indonesia in order to build the environment of digital, in, uh, digital transformation. So some of them is from, uh, le let's so call uh, like uh, uh, Herman Wijaya from Tokopedia and Crystal, former Gojek and so on. At that time I was still in uh, Nordflux in Jakarta and so on. So we would like to build the environment, which is uh, many startups have been uh, developing, especially in Jakarta in order to be competitive and fortunately Indonesia now is one of the very rapid growing especially in the startup company, startup environment, marketplace and so on like a Tokopedia, Blibli, Bukalapak and so on right okay so if we talk about 4.0 it will be or it will have the starting point it's so called the 1.0 uh, 2.0, 3.0, and so on. So now we are on the 4.0 era. What is the 4.0 era? So this is, we have to keep in mind that 4.0 would like to connect all the devices and allow them to communicate by themselves, right? So if we have IoT device, they can communicate by themselves without any intervention from uh, human. So if we know working on, let, let's say, uh, probably like a Tesla, you know Tesla, right? Like an automotive or electric car from Elon Musk and, and, and friends, you will find that they already embed many sensors in their car with a voice recognition. All sensors can be enabled or activated. So they can be activated by themselves through the command from the human. So human just said something, then the computer will work. Okay. Also the same like um, MacBook, we have the Siri, right? Siri, when we uh, say, hey Siri, right? Then Siri will appear and try to say something. However, now ChatGPT is uh, rapidly growing and uh, Siri will be uh, also outperformed. Okay? So uh, 4.0 allow the device to connect to each other, communicate to each other, and run or execute specific tasks by themselves. So this is the first. However, in the first era of the industrial revolution, it is just like a mass production, automation, we use the robot in order to do the manufacturers, but now all of them communicate by themselves and um, do the predictive maintenance and so on by themselves 
so it will simplify our work, especially in many fields. Okay, I will uh, show you some demos later. So why industrial revolution is uh, exploding? Okay, so one of uh, the key point is the AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, before I uh, start this, probably we have to see some videos. Uh, so. Uh, this is, uh, for me, is a critical time, right? After having lunch, okay? <laughs> and uh, probably some of you get uh, sleepy or something, right? So let, uh, let us uh, watch some movie or video first before I uh, return or go back to this slide, okay? Agree? Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a voice here. So this is the introduction. What, uh, why it can be realized? So one of the important parts is AI, artificial intelligence. Okay. So if um, probably uh, some of you uh, at that time still very young, but we already passed the era of the traditional AI. So we have the expert systems, AI, artificial neural networks, fuzzy logic system, and so on. But nowadays we are already on the third wave, where the arti artificial intelligence nowadays have been deployed in many industries. Okay? Why? Because the AI have been um, widely or extensively explored and researched. And finally, we call it uh, deep learning, one of the very essential parts of the, uh, the reason why AI nowadays is everywhere. Okay? Even in your camera, 
in your mobile phone, you can see that uh, behind of your phone, uh, they say that AI camera, right? Is it exist or not? Very different, right? But uh, AI camera, what is the purpose? Probably when we capture the image, then they have the algorithm inside your phone in order to improve or enhance the quality of image, okay? So uh, looks like maybe it less bright or the brightness is not good, they will uh, automatically enhance it and so on. So there are many algorithms inside your phones already. Not only that, but AI already have been implemented in medical, uh, industry, ecological environment, and many things, as you already saw on the video. Okay? So if we want to discuss about AI used in science, uh, now, everyone or everywhere already know about AI because of one of them is deep learning, more advanced AI technology. Okay. So before we talk about deep learning, we have to know about three steps of the uh, AI. Okay. So first is learning. Okay. Let's imagine when we, you want to study something which is new, you will collect the resources, right? You will read the book, you will, uh, let's say, um, read the book or ask uh, someone who expert on that field or you do the exam and so on in order to be expert on that field, okay? So it is the same. As computers, wants to learn something, we have to provide the information first, okay? For example, for me, like me in our lab is uh, image. So computer vision lab, um, regard the data or the, the, yeah, the, the, the learning materials is the image, okay? So we capture everything and then uh, let the computers uh, do the algorithm or run the algorithm, then output the predictors. So I always or often uh, illustrate with a simple question, I mean, simple example. For example, if you want to distinguish apple and orange, okay? So if you want computers distinguish with whether this is apple or orange, you have to capture a hundreds or thousand images of apple and orange, okay? Then we feed this data to the algorithm, okay? Then computer will learn whether the features, okay, the color, the texture, okay, the size of the object. Then if you give the testing image, the computer will know that this is orange with, let's say, 90% confidence scores and so on, okay? So, the same, how we think, how we study as a human, it is also the same like a computer. They need learning. This is the first step, okay? Give all data and especially high quality of data. If you want to allow the computers to distinguish the orange and apple, make sure there is no grape there, right? There is no, what in uh, Vietnam, maybe uh, durian or another pineapple or wh whatever, yeah? So the, uh, prevent to give them the dirty data. But high quality data is important for the computers, okay? Then after learning, inferencing. They can decide whether this is apple or orange, okay? With uh, how many percentage of accuracy and confidence. Okay. Then they will also have the evaluation. So this is also, uh, this is always the cycle how computer learn, okay? So as long as you have the very good quality of data uh, and also advanced algorithm, you can uh, make sure that your computers or your models can predict it uh, properly or accurately. So this is why there are many topics, right, in this competition, from coffee bean, from uh, IOD device, from probably like uh, agriculture devices and so on. Why? Because the data at this time or today is everywhere. You can uh, go to the roboflow.com, like a public data set, or GitHub, they also provide the uh, public data set, then try to train the images and evaluate the results, okay? So this is AI. Again, um, if we talk about AI, AI will consist of these two types. 
Wake and Strong AI. So if you see the name, you can uh, directly uh, distinguish uh, whether this is Wake or Strong, right? So Wake AI, uh, for example, nowadays uh, we know about ChatGPT, right? How about in, in Vietnam? Already use ChatGPT? Getting familiar about this, right? So if you say, um, uh, what is the best uh, dinner for today in Aceh? Probably he will answer, right? He or she, I'm not sure. But this is computer. So a lot of data, a million of data, okay, probably billion of data. They will train it through a very uh, sophisticated algorithm inside the chat GPT. Uh, yesterday, uh, the founders of uh, OpenAI visited our capital city in Jakarta, Sam Altman, right? So he talked about chat GPT and so on. This is amazing, this is fantastic, right? However, uh, if you know about the Khan Academy, Khan Academy, Salman, Sal Khan, he then uh, introduced the chat GPT for education. I think for us in science, as a researchers, this is very important. When technology can assist the students to learn more, more efficient, more quickly, and probably our expectation is they can understand uh, faster, right? But uh, know that ChatGPT is not to replace us, okay? Because uh, be uh, regard them as an our assistant, I think in my personal opinion, it is much better, okay? Then the strong AI. You know about the uh, RoboClean or the robot that clean all of the your room? So if you buy the, the clean robot, you just turn on them, put it on your floor, and everything is clean within a couple of minutes. So this is uh, one of the strong AI. So if uh, that robot founds the obstacle, he will decide whether he has to turn left or turn right. So they can decide by themselves. Okay? Because what? AI inside, algorithm have been installed and deployed on that system. So they can decide like a uh, human. However, again, AI will not replace us because um, human is a very complete, okay? We are irrepressible, agree? <laughs> I hope you agree, okay? So let us go to the uh, next video, okay? In order to know about the one of the example of weak AI, specific purpose from Tesla. Here we go. Take me to pizza. I'm cold. Open charge port. Lock the doors. Open Netflix. I'll be there in 30 minutes. Make screen brighter. Anyone have Tesla here? No? Plan to buy one? Okay. Buy me one. <laughs> so, the challenge first is take more exercise, right? Many things can be done automatically nowadays, right? So, so have to aware more about our body. Otherwise, we will be become uh, fatter, okay? Because uh, less of movement. Because just tell something, everything open, okay? Uh, open the door, lock the door, okay? So also aware you're healthy, so take more exercise on this era, okay? Run uh, or walk more, okay? Sleep uh, enough, okay? And then take our selective uh, to, to, to have the dinner, uh, extra dinner probably, lunch, and then after lunch menu probably. So we have to be uh, very wise in this era, okay? All automatic. So if you see this illustration, our voice is interpreted uh, through the algorithm, okay? Our voice, then um, the recorder or the 
the, the device, record it, right? And then uh, try to recognize what is our command, okay? Let's say like uh, open the door then or lock the door. The door is closed, everything closed because the voice recognition algorithm inside the system. This is why the Tesla probably have uh, deployed many sensors, okay? Then also camera and other sensor uh, I'm, I'm not really familiar with. However, by just using our voice, the IoT or the system of the computer system on that car can be enabled or activated. So this is interesting, and this is one of the weak AI. Because what? Because this is still specific purpose inside the, the car, okay? But if you tell something outside the car, it might not work. So this is still the specific purpose. So um, me as a researcher, one of, uh, so probably this is also important for the students, probably those who want to continue the bachelor degree. We know about the googlescholar.com. So if you want to see or find the uh, related literatures or references on your topic, you can search on scholar.google.com. When I check the agriculture using the deep learning still in 2023, it became much or uh, the, the number of the papers is rapidly growing, okay? Then when I search about video anomaly detection through AI and so on, still again, it exists in many papers comes as a suggestion. And even in medical, if you want to uh, detect uh, the disease or like a TB, pneumonia, or uh, like a melanoma cancer, skin cancer, and so on, you can also find the related papers. The meaning or the notes is the deep learning, AI, is rapidly growing in many fields. Okay? This is why I call AI and deep learning in many fields. Even if you want to search or Googling something, okay, you want to look for a specific topic that you want to sort uh, the pineapple probably, okay, using the camera and so on, probably the, the related references are already exist. So use the scholar google.com in order to find the related references, okay? Okay, I by myself, okay, personally, I started to know about the deep learning, a more advanced of AI from 2011. When I visited a conference in Xi'an, China, one of um, the most yeah, historical uh, city in China. Because, if, uh, have you visited this city before? No? Okay. Uh, one day, if you have money and opportunity, you can visit this, this city. Very interesting many things, many historical sites, and so on, okay? APSIPA held uh, the conference in Xi'an, China. Then uh, one of the uh, speakers, Li Cheng, one of the Microsoft evangelists uh, at that time, now probably he's already retired, and, okay? Uh, introduced about the deep learning. And if you see his Google Scholar profile, okay, his citation is, Nearly about, uh, yeah, near uh, 80,000 citation. In other words, his scientific articles have been cited by another papers. Uh, the number is almost an 80,000 citation. In other words, he is very influential in the deep learning or AI, okay? Leighton introduced me about the deep learning at that time. Then deep learning is growing, exploding, and so on. And this three guys is the recipient of the Nobel Prize of Computing. Benjil, Hinton, and Likun. They are all the um, so-called court fathers of AI. Why? For example, Likun from uh, uh, Meta, Meta, okay? Facebook, previously is Facebook. His citation is about what? Uh, 300,000 citation, which is very very influential, okay? Because one of them is, the, the top is deep learning, which has been cited by almost 70,000 
papers. In other words, um, many research have been inspired by this idea. Okay, this is Likun from Meta, and also Hinton, previously at Google. Now uh, he decided to to step down from Google and focus on uh, academia as a professor in University of uh, Toronto. Again, the citation is also fantastic. Uh, almost 700,000. Okay? If you want to study about AI, try to uh, refer to their papers or their team in order to find the recent uh, roadmap of the AI. What's going on in AI? You can find uh, recent papers of their team. However, not only their, their team, but if your country have uh, also renowned scholars who already have also good citation, you can also uh, read their, their papers, okay? Benjiu, Benjiu, uh, unlike the uh, previous two person, he committed to, to be a professor in University of Montreal, Canada, okay? So uh, this is the decision of uh, Benjiu, right? And the citation also, very high, uh, it shows the, his contribution in AI and deep learning, okay? So um, next, I would like to again review about the, how the deep learning AI machine learning works. First, again, we need data, okay? So everything, if you want to perform something, data, data, and data. Again, data have to be very high quality. Select the data that we want to fit to the computers, otherwise it will be overfitting or there is a problem in classification, there's a problem in detection, okay? And they are prone to noise and so on. So the data is very important. Then perform or execute the algorithm. Many things. Algorithm probably uh, some of you already knows about a vision net and then <clears throat> a VGG net or exception or uh, many things, okay, rest net and so on, in order to predict the object, okay? Then the output is the models, then try to evaluate the predictors using the testing image. What is the testing image? The image that hasn't been unseen or, or unseen before by the models, okay? For example, if we want to distinguish about the apple and orange, okay? We fit the computer with uh, 100 or 1,000 image, but also test the figure of the apple that hasn't yet been seen by uh, the computers, okay? This is the testing image, okay? But if you test using the, the train image, that's unfair, right? So that is not the learning process. Okay, then evaluate, try to improve, try to improve the accuracy and so on. So uh, I, would, I, don't, uh, I will not uh, try to uh, explain this, the difference. You, you may see the slide later. This is the illustration, okay? If you want to distinguish whether this is cat or dog, okay? Cat, you provide 100 or 1,000 images, also dog, then uh, put them into a computer algorithm, okay? They will extract the features. Why this cat? Probably the color. Why this is cat? Because the texture. Why this is cat? Probably the size of the ear. Different, right? And then also the eye. Computer will learn by themselves. So deep learning will extract the important features of that image by themselves. Okay? So we do not need to determine, try to learn about the ear. Try to learn about the eye. We don't need to. Okay? Just allow or let them extract the features by themselves, like, like us, okay? If uh, I want to know about this flower, I will see about the color, the texture, right? The size is the same. Deep learning adopted the idea how the human learn, okay? And then we finally can decide this is cat, okay? Because the arrow is a cat. And this application also have been Implemented in many fields. This is the face recognition. Input image, detect, find the landmark of the, the face, 
And the final is the transform and crop image and put it to the computer algorithm and we finally can know this is Trump, okay? Okay, so there are many pre-processing before we can detect the face. Who is he, who is she, and so on, okay? And again, the computer, excuse me, the computer will find the important features by themselves. About the shape, about the, okay, like uh, eye area, yeah, about the edge uh, or the some high level features and so on. Computer will learn by themselves, okay? And then we can know who is he or who is she and so on. So deep learning is rapidly growing, not only face, but also in different fields. This is one of the examples, okay? When we uh, install the um, uh, camera, like a CCTV in public area, right? When we find some people, which is probably, uh, he is still uh, uh, under an investigation or something. When we found them in the, like, uh, let's say like a MRT, mass rapid transit station, we can find it and give the notification to the police. It can be. Uh, capture or catch, right? So this is one of the application that has been utilized by the police, especially for the surveillance system, okay? And this is one of the example. And in Jakarta, uh, also have been deployed in some fields for the security purpose, okay? In the capital city. Okay. And with the accuracy. Because if the accuracy is below 50%, it means that the predictors is not confident enough to predict them, right? If they incorrectly predict, then it will be another problem, okay? So this is one of our uh, research that has been funded, I mean, that has been uh, awarded by the, uh, our ministry in order to localize the moving object and then classify each of them, okay? This is one of our research and we also have uh, published uh, this paper in the Q1 journals uh, in 2019, okay? Then finally, we, uh, this is the conventional one without any localization, okay? We use the full frame. However, our works try to just localize the moving area and then try to uh, classify the image. So let's see. This is the full frame uh, detection, but we then try to introduce the dynamic. When the area is moving, then that is our input. So the frame is dynamic, okay? And again, this is uh, more efficient than previous works. Okay. Our works also on the medicals, okay? Medical application, this is like a, a retinal fundus image. We fit them to the computer's models, try to identify whether it has diabetic retinopathy or not. Diabetic retinopathy is the diabetic, diabetic disease that attack your eye, okay? Then, uh, but they also have some uh, information here, different from the original or the normal patient and the, uh, with the diabetic retinopathy. So they have uh, like a uh, different in texture and, and color in their retinal fundus images. And uh, we also employ the deep learning in this um, application in order to evaluate whether our works can outperform the previous works. And this is one of the illustration. AI also works on autonomous quality controls in the company. Okay, let's see.
you can see here, the computers try to uh, take the object that can be classified into two classes. Okay, probably the recycle and non-recycle trash. Using the very high definition uh, camera and also the computer models in order to detect whether this is recycle or non-recycle object. I guess this is very important, uh, safe in terms of cost, right? And really helpful for the human. Okay, instead of employ human in order to manually sort the object. And we as uh, Southeast Asia country where the population is very big, again, this will simplify our works to sort uh, the object, right? However, probably some participants are not in Southeast Asia, but also I think this is very useful. Okay, let me make it uh, faster, okay? Okay. This is another uh, use case from my previous company, Nordflux, who already offers some products in a smart city application, again using AI and deep learning. This is about the customer behavior analysis, okay? We can identify which product that is uh, grab more attention than another uh, product, okay? By just using the heat map, the behavior of the user, whether they uh, really spend some time, few minutes, or even one hour in some part, probably they interest on that position, right? And also we output the percentage of the uh, frequency, the density. This is also to analyze how many people comes to our uh, store. Okay, this is store analytics, whether um, it still exists or can be, uh, can be more, uh, I mean, proposed new product and so on to be, to grab more attention of the users and so on. They also have the dashboard because as a stakeholder, they don't really want to this uh, data, but they want uh, insight, right? The new knowledge from the data. They want data, they want the graph. Then this dashboard is very important as, uh, for the decision maker. Okay, as I also mentioned that I, as a researcher, still uh, work very close with this company in research. So if we talk about AI used in science, it is uh, really related to the science itself, but also uh, closely co collaborated with the uh, industry. Why? Because if you want to propose something, if there is no demand in the industry, then it will be very useless, right? So we decided to very close to the industry to uh, research uh, what is their demand, okay? And recently, uh, just uh, uh, two days ago, we just also submitted another proposal to the, our ministry to, with, with this uh, partner in order to propose a new idea as well. <clears throat> so let's see, this is a video anomaly detection. This 
one means anomaly, okay? Okay, so it, it, it detected the anomaly. This is the car accident. There's an anomaly there. This is artificial fighting, okay? But AI can can detect it. This is our artificial data in Nordflux uh, company in Jakarta. It's uh, stealing, okay? Someone uh, slowly try to find something and take it away. This is uh, explosion. Okay. This detection very important for the police or the security officer, right? So then they they can identify which spot has the anomaly, so they can do the preventive action as early as possible. This is fighting. This is uh, not artificial fighting, okay? This is a real fighting. Okay, this idea have been published on ICME 2022, one of the top higher conference in multimedia, uh, IEEE ICME, in International Conference in Multimedia Expo. Fortunately, this get accepted. Okay, so this is, comes to the conclusion that, again, today we have to be very aware or close, I mean, open your eyes and your mind to learn about the IoT, about the data, what is the high quality of data, and then about the AI and some uh, derived variants of them. Why? Because we are now embracing the 4.0 era, when the computers can work very well, and also the hardware can support uh, the software in order to get the very high accuracy to solve our problem. And as a human, we have to very well experience in order to make them as a friend, as a colleagues, as a partner, okay? So we are still irreplaceable, and AI can be our friend in order to save our time, to save our budget, and also simplify our life. I think this is my talk. Thank you very much, and back to the moderators. Thank you very much. Wow, it's like really, really interesting to see how uh, AI in development over the past few years that has been uh, being told here by the presentation itself. But uh, like in the usual seminar, there's just always going to be some questions, of, of course, like like about how AI will be impact our own lives and such. So we are moving into the Q and A session for offline and online participants. So there's going to be one session, three questions maximum. For the participants offline here, you can uh, raise your hand and please stand up, say your name, institution or school, or just uh, please uh, present your name and ask the question itself. For the online participants, you guys can uh, use the chat column in Zoom to ask the questions and then the committee will present the questions to the presenter. So if Anyone's going to ask a questions? Please uh, raise your hand. In in Bahasa, it's also okay. So it's not purely English and stuff. If you really don't understand English much. Yes? Please state your name. 
Uh, perkenalkan, nama saya Muhammad Alail Kadrilah. Saya dari Universitas Syakola Prodi Teknik Elektro. Uh, saya mau nanya uh, Pak mengenai uh, generatif AI seperti GPT dan BART. Seperti yang kita tahu, tahun ini adalah tahun di mana AI berkembang sangat pesat, terutama di bidang uh, generatif AI-nya sendiri. Tapi uh, kenapa AI, AI expert seperti Geoffrey Hinton yang dikenal sebagai Godfather of AI yang dari Google itu mengatakan uh, AI itu berbahaya. Terus juga seperti Elon Musk yang salah satu founder dari OpenAI mengatakan AI itu lebih berbahaya dari nuklir. Sekian Pak, terima kasih. Oke. Okay. Directly reply or Yeah, okay. okay, I think mm, this is a very good question about the generative AI. And one of the <coughs> uh, recent trends is uh, chat GPT, right? And the question is, um, okay, the generative AI can, um, I mean, can consume or can process not only one domain of data, like a text also, They can also uh, the voice also and also probably the video and so on. Try to um, yeah generate like uh, the engine of the GPT which uh, train a lot of abundant of data and then try to uh, evaluate right. Try to inference whether this uh, question have the very uh, match to the this reply or not and so on. So it is because a lot of data, one, and also, again, as you mentioned earlier, that like a bird and many algorithm uh, transformer and so on in, out there, already uh, very advanced, okay? Try to find the features of every input and then try to be more confidently to evaluate or predict uh, the comment or the question or the The, the comment or the input from the users, okay? I will not talk about the, a very detail about the bird, about the transformer, about the active learning, generative AI, and so on. Uh, you, you may learn about this later, especially uh, in NLP, it's growing very rapid, right? In L NLP, it's uh, natural language processing. You just type something, then you can find the answer directly. Okay. Uh, previously, before ChatGPT, there are many also like a chatbot, right? In, for example, if you use the AirAsia, some of them use the AirAsia, right? There is a chatbot. Who is she? I'm not really sure. You just type something, some question, then they, she will reply as a bot. Okay. But sometimes it takes some time. It takes time. Okay. So there is a demand when we ask something. We need the answer, which is very quick and accurate, right? This is the demand, okay? And ChatGPT uh, is ongoing to um, supply that demand with the technology. If the question is why the founders or some practitioners and so on have the disagree in some parts, I do believe. Uh, the solution is, if you search uh, recently, like a few days ago, discussion about the Hinton and Andrew Ng, one of the uh, founders of Course Era, right? They come to the conclusion is, we need one voice as a researcher in AI, as a practitioner, industry, one voice in order to make the regulation. Do and don'ts, okay? What is allowed or this allowed, right? So this is very important, like a regulation. And they compared with the uh, previous, um, previous convention that was done before. Okay? They, so uh, some of them, like another uh, researchers in another domain, already agree in some or another domain. And then this become a convention, regulation, and then all the world's 
approve that. So I guess if we see <coughs> some of them disagree, some of them uh, really want to make a, this is a debatable and so on, I guess this is a very good sign of AI. Because if uh, there is no disagreement, then the question is very big, right? Why everyone ag agree with this? Okay. Why ChatGPT is has been approved in all the countries without any uh, input, without any criti critical suggestion? That is the problem. Okay. But if there is a discussion, if there is a debatable, or there is a, um, a very you know like a, uh, in the parliament, there are many things that they have to discuss. That is good. Then it will come to the uh, regulation that we can use. So in my opinion, AI will be very dangerous if there is no regulation. For example, uh, some of uh, people will uh, look for the answer of the exam using chat, GPT. That's a dangerous. First, probably the, qu the answer is right, but the lecturer will easily identify you are a chat GPT user. Why? Probably they never come to the class, right? When a lecturer uh, asked him to or her to uh, answer in front of the whiteboard and so on, he cannot. But why? In the exam can, okay? The question become bigger, okay? So if the regulation hasn't yet been decided, that is the dangerous, surely. So why industry, researchers, uh, and users like us, society, have to very uh, actively involved, then we put the regulation. One of uh, very important and very good uh, example is in China. They have a smart lamp. Smart lamp, you know lamp? So when they read the book, okay, that smart lamp, if that students have the question about that, pr uh, that, uh, that uh, problem, he can say something to that smart lamp. Ask, for, for example, who is the founders of, uh, let's say, Microsoft? And then that smart lamp will reply, Bill Gates. He found it uh, in blah, 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 blah. So, assistance, okay? As an assistance, not as a problem solver. So, if we regard the technology like this, we will save the time. We will become more smarter much smarter than before, okay? For me, in, 2000, in the early 2000, when we want to buy or purchase the book, we have to go to, in Jakarta, it's so-called Kuitang, Senen. There are many used books in, in, in that place. Cheap, okay? But the problem is traffic jam, okay? So nowadays, Kuitang is, has been, uh, is undergoing for the re re relocation. And again, another challenge is many conventional bookstores also has been terminated or closed, right? Like a Gunung Agung, okay? Why? Because of digital transformation. Now we will save a lot of time if we want to study something new, unlike before, okay? So again, without regulation, AI very dangerous. Debate or um, like a, you know, like a very uh, uh, discussion which is very good, which is very, you know, like one part, one part is not agree, disagree. I think this is a one of a very good sign of discussion. And hopefully the third one is we come to the convention and regulation that can be accepted through all the worlds especially in academia, education, research, and so on. And in my personal opinion, let assume or regard them as an our assistance, not our problem solver. I think this is the, the answer. Hope cover the question. Yeah, please give a round of applause first. Yeah, okay, there's gonna be two more questions left to be answered, so if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. It's all right, it's not like you need to have a background in technology or something, just like myself. 
Anyone? If there's not going to be anybody left, can I may ask a question myself, sir? Okay, sure. So uh, if you if you guys can also see from the presentation and stuff, and also like from news and such, even though like uh, I'm sorry if like myself doesn't even really have much knowledge in the AI section of such, but uh, uh, people have many kind of talks about how AI is dangerous, about people doesn't have any knowledge about AI, like it can be used as a crime and such. Uh, as I have recalled, there's something, a case in Canada in which uh, there's a crime with involve, uh, the crime itself involve someone replicating a voice of like some, someone else's child voice to be a ransom. So yeah, some, some kind of like such crime using AI. So if you see in the future with all those, even though with the benefits and also with the, uh, the frightening things about AI, like uh, what do you think about it, sir? Thank you. Thank you, I think this is also a very good question. Uh, everyone uh, also see the dangers of AI, right? So this is a very good question. Back to the, my slide, can you share uh, back to my presentation? Okay, wait a second. Okay, can we full screen something? Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, if we have um, sophisticated technology, then we will try, especially for those who have a uh, sense of crime, right? they will find the solution or try to find or utilize this, that technology to use it illeg illeg illegally, right? So this is common. So again, for me personally, and also this is the spirit of our university, right? Technology is growing, but our behavior and attitude have to be also growing, okay? We have to be very adaptive to the technology, but when our spirit to learn more, to distinguish which one is good, which, is, which one is bad, then we can put ourselves into proper position, okay? So AI uh, will be rapidly growing, but we have to be more wise in everything, okay? If we have opportunity to cheat our friend, then you have to ask by ourselves whether this is correct or not. Right? But sometimes there's a whisper or something. This is a, uh, your, your chance, right? This is your opportunity to cheat them and so on. Then you have to ask again whether this is good or not, right? So AI, probably we have to uh, make them as friend positively. Otherwise, AI will be a bad friend, okay? However, in technology, for example here, when we do the face recognition for the like a virtual presence, okay, when the attendance nowadays we just need to open the application, open the camera, then <clears throat> uh, give or show your, your face in front of the camera, then the attendance system will regard you, you already present on your office, right? However, some of them also have the printed paper with the face, right? It's so-called face pooing. So for example, uh, you ask your friend, use your image in printed version and close it to the sensors. So as if you already present on your office, but that is uh, cheating, right? We call it a face pooing. So AI have the threat, AI have their own disadvantages. Another domain of research will help them. So it's so-called face proving. Face recognition, have a good friend, it's so-called face proving algorithm. So if someone want to cheat 
um, the original face using direct camera, uh, using version. The algorithm can identify using the fake person, whether this is fake person or not. So algorithm also can prevent it. So this is the first. But again, this will not work in every condition, right? Again, so I have to say that attitude is the important part in this technology era. If you want to cheat someone, then you have to ask whether this is correct or not, okay? For me, I'm an, I, I really know about AI. So I know how to exploit AI in the, in, in, in the wrong um, action, right? But I will not do this. Why? Because that's wrong. For you or for all the uh, participants probably not really familiar with AI, later on, you can, I believe, you can easily uh, execute or utilize AI. Why? Because the application become more easier, easy to learn, okay? But again, this will not allow us to easily uh, use it in the wrong way. So again, I have to say that attitude is important and ask to ourselves whether this is okay or not. And the criminals, the bad news will always coming. Although even when the AI still not exists, right? The crime is everywhere, okay? And this is also the, the, the challenge for the digital media to publish more the good news instead of the bad news. And unfortunately, some of the media nowadays sell the bad news to get more click, to get more attention. But especially that is not good for our children, our uh, generation. Their, that generation, when they show the YouTube and uh, abruptly the, uh, what? the advertisement, which is not really good, they, they will follow, right? So again, selective, use the technology more wise than before. And the society have to also be very active to prevent the negative, uh, negative side of AI uh, will, dom uh, will be um, dominant or will be very actively attack us in, the, in that way. Okay, I think this is my, my answer. Thank you very much. Let's give more round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for the great, great question. Now I know what to choose between a Tesla and a Nokia 360. Thank you. So one more question, one more question left for this session. Everyone feel free to ask. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm definitely most agree with you in terms of like how we have to use um, technology with awareness. Um, but I feel like no matter how much progressive technology is going to be, there will always be flaws existed. So I'm pretty uh, curious what you think about it, because um, I have a personal experience um, using ChatGPT. So I feel like, for example, every time a professor gives, um, gives her some reading assignments, some writing assignments, for example, like, for example, e exam prompt or discussion post, if 20 students um, in the class use ChatGPT to complete the assignment, it's so easy to spot it out because ChatGPT would um, generate, even though they ger generate um, several um, answers or uh, responses, um, it gives only one idea, general idea, but with um, different <laughs> paraphrasing ways. And so, yeah, um, what do you think about this? Okay. Very good question, okay? Uh, about the ChatGPT, the recent trends, and most of them already utilize the ChatGPT uh, for answer the, the exam and so on. Um, for me, I somehow agree with the Sal Academy, Sal uh, Khan Academy. You already heard uh, this, this education platform. He integrated ChatGPT for education. So, <clears throat> I'm very uh, optimistic to the AI. Why? Um, again, as you say that we are irreplaceable. Human 
lecturer, okay, they are still the first motivators in class, not chat GPT, okay. They uh, come to the class to give us the lectures because they are, you know, um, they, they are very happy to share that knowledge. That's why for me, in my personal feeling, when I attend my class and see a lot of students already ready to hear what I will deliver on, on that day, I feel very excited. I want to share everything, okay? But ChatGPT is machine. They cannot fail something, okay? So they have to be our assistance. That's the key point. They cannot replace me, okay? When my, uh, the face of expression of face of my students not really satisfied on me, next week I will improve the quality of my, my teaching. But ChatGPT cannot. Okay, again, once again, they have to be our assistants and Saul in Khan Academy, which is very good, to assist students when they really want to know something, just uh, type the text and the chat GPT will assist us with a, a solution. And again, if this um, exploited to answer the question, for us as a lecturer, I know he used or they use the chat GPT because the solution again because this is the learning okay the data okay the data will be trained will be learned by the models and they will out the prediction with uh, probably the variation of the answer is can be predicted but uh, the, the 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 end of that answer is still the same okay so it is easy for us as a lecturer to uh, identify. But the question again, the challenge as a lecturer is we have to be more persistent and don't be a lazy lecturer. So this is the problem nowadays. If they never attend to class, then that will be a threat for them as a lecturer. Because what? You, s you will see all can answer your question, okay? but you never come to the class. How come? Okay, so this is about the learning objective, the quality of the, those who have knowledge, but if they don't have the quality to teach, then that is the threat, the real threat of the chat GPT in education. I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give more round of applause. Thank you. Okay, so that's all three questions. So uh, should we go for another session, sir? Or shall we close? It depends. Okay, um, I'll give one more last chance. Maybe someone has a sparkle of initiation of questions answering their mind, like one last more questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, Dr. Mukhtar for your nice uh, sharing and presentations. As we can see, the AI is growing very fast nowadays. Uh, it starts from maybe uh, data mining, uh, machine learning. Now we, we I used to see the deep learning and chat GPT. In your opinion, what will be the next trends in this uh, AI world? Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think this is a very good also question. And I'm not the um, famous man, <laughs> like some old man, and probably like a lacoon and so on. This is purely my point of view based on the past experiences, okay? Probably some of you might heard about metaphors, okay? But after ChatGPT, it is gradually disappear. So what uh, yesterday some Altman said that in Silicon Valley, they are very confident even though their idea one day failed. This is a so-called iterative, iterative, okay? Incremental, yeah. Incremental evaluation, trying, and then uh, propose the new idea, whether this is success or not, it will never hurt you. 
and then they will keep on going because they are they have a very good patient in technology okay so we have to also be ready that ChatGPT might be successful or not because in my personal opinion metaphors in one sense or in one side will be very uh, have a benefit for example like a stem stem is uh, education for the for example, the elementary, junior high school, kindergarten, they really like something which is visual, okay? When we learn something with a lot of visual materials, they really like and unforgettable. So I have a class, it's so-called augmented reality, and then we uh, teach them in kindergarten with uh, all the AR teaching materials, they are so excited, okay? But that is only one part, whether all of uh, metaphors expect everything can use metaphors, right? For meeting, for everything, like uh, gaming and so on. But there is a benefit of metaphors nowadays I really uh, experience in the education. But in other parts, they are still ongoing. Also ChatGPT, okay? why I also concerned about the education, this can be very beneficial for education, as long as we treat them as an assistance. Okay, this is another. And ChatGPT can also be a very good virtual assistance, like to replace the Siri or to enhance the Siri, the voice recognition in Macintosh and, and another. Uh, in, in, in Microsoft, there is a what, Corti uh, or something? So this is also good, partially. I, but I still cannot see the AI, which is a product that can be beneficial in many things. Still, still the challenge. So if you ask about the features of the AI, again, what is IoT that has been deployed in smart farming, okay? Like uh, in, in Taiwan, when I, uh, study there. Uh, green building, they use IoT for the smart building to uh, monitor uh, the humidity of the room, then control it using IoT, okay, to save the energy like this. It's a little, little bit cold, right? Then they can monitor to turn down or turn up the um, temperatures and so on. This is a good IoT still because uh, the idea is to communicate f from one device to another device. So IoT in an applied um, part which will be very um, demanding and I think promising, okay? And another thing is uh, recently we use AI for uh, underwater, okay? For environment, environment needs AI. For example, like uh, NVIDIA show before, really, really, we really need AI to uh, identify the illegal fishing, okay? Uh, the reservation or preservation of the coral underwater, which is very bad nowadays. In some parts, the coral has been damaged, okay? When we can use the AI to monitor of the health of the coral and then do the preservation, that also also good. So environment AI, okay? Medical AI and also education AI, I cannot say something very specific. This is very important for the human being, okay? Instead of entertainment. <laughs> entertainment is very, um, you know, temporary because the entertainment will be rapidly changed, okay? From PlayStation, nowadays no one <laughs> will go to the rental, right? They will play the game using mobile, right? And then entertainment uh, never ends. Well, people maybe want to get more entertainment later, but our children now need more interaction. Entertainment that can be very interactive to the parents. This is the challenge. So I, I'm, I'm not really sure AI can be very good on this, but we can again treat them as an assistance. But nowadays children need the entertainment with the parents then this is the problem nowadays. I'm not sure in Vietnam, but in Indonesia, if 
the parents want to buy something, he will uh, say to the children, sit here, this is the game, okay? <laughs> how to, how to treat them like this. And how to be a good teenager and how to be a good leader in the future. So I cannot say this. So education, environment, and medicals will be a promising uh, AI application in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much to Mr. Khalil and the very great, great answer and question. So please uh, clap your hands. So uh, that's all, maybe, because I've seen someone's been bopping their head down forward and also there's been someone sleeping. So I will give the great and wonderful news that this, uh, I conclude this q and a uh, session. So thank you to uh, Mr. Khalil. And let's give one final applause to Mr. Khalil and his presentation. <laughs> All right, uh, along with the end of this webinar's Q&A session, also marks the end of this afternoon webinar for this current Indonesia International IoT Olympiad 2023. We hope you enjoy this afternoon webinar and as some wise man Walton said, leave the bad things behind because you'll be stuffed with a lot of this webinar's benefit and you sure will do. My name is Friga Gentana and as this webinar's master of ceremony sends our parting ways for today and we would like to say Thank you for attending this webinar. Have a pleasant day and see you soon. Peace be upon you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And there's an announcement for the committee for all participants. I would like to gently remind you that the closing ceremony will be on the 17th of June at 9 a.m. in the morning for online for both online and offline participants. So uh, that's all, and thank you. You may leave the room, or take any photos, or do anything you want. So, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>